First speaker is J.K. Campbell, who is Education Division, Division Chair and Associate Professor of Education at Southwestern College in Winfield, Kansas. Campbell has 31 years of experience in public education and specialized training in early childhood education, business and operations, and administration. Before he joined Southwestern College, Campbell served as superintendent of the Winfield United School District 465 for seven years, during which he jump-started an effort to raise money for the conservation of artworks in the school system's collection. He is a board member of the USD 465 Foundation, which maintains the art, art collection. And Campbell earned his doctorate in education leadership and a, uh, a master's degree in educational administration and supervision, uh, both from Wichita State University. Thank you. On behalf of the USD 465 Foundation and our Winfield Art Conservation Committee, I'm honored to share the Winfield story, a story really of visionary art educators, of a, one district leader and probably a few more, but uh, and then a community who came together to create a really long-standing legacy of art education and appreciation, a story of successes and challenges, a story that began right at 100 years ago, and a story that's going to live on for many years to come. So little did I know that when I became superintendent of the school district that I would become part of that story. Uh, shortly after I started my new position in Winfield, a man by the name of Robert Hartley, a respected journalist, a Winfield High School graduate, uh, who he and his wife retired, returned to Winfield. He was involved in research in a presentation for the Winfield Historical Society's History Day presentation. And Mr. Hartley penned a compelling, well-researched and historically accurate summary about the Winfield School's art collection, an art collection that he had experienced when he was uh, going through the school system. And it was an art collection as the incoming superintendent for me that I was completely unaware of until he came in and started talking to me about it. But it was in his presentation that he elevated this long-standing and significant appreciation held for the arts in the school district and in the larger Winfield community. The historical information and the pictures presented today are credited to Mr. Hartley and drawn from the presentation he made about the art collection and the art gallery that was once located in the Winfield High School. And in, in his research, he highlighted early teachers of art in Winfield schools, teachers who made a notable difference in expanding art education in the district and community. He recognized young artists, Winfield teachers encouraged and supported, who later became distinguished painters and sculptors, printmakers. And according to Mr. Hartley, these early Winfield art teachers drove an aggressive agenda for art education in Winfield. They reached out to artists and art patrons across the state. They put Winfield, the Winfield school system, the art program on a large map. To this day, art education remains a high priority in the Winfield community and within that school system. And the art teachers there today are to be recognized and thanked for continuing that rich legacy of high quality art education, along with encouraging and supporting students of all ages to engage in the arts. So the Winfield story began with uh, back in the early 20s, a, a little bit later than what was mentioned with some school districts earlier today. But early in 1926, there was an artist, Laredo Taft, who was working on a bronze, bronze statue of Abraham Lincoln at his studio in Chicago. And an acquaintance and former student called on the sculptor. The student's name was Evan E. Evans, and he had just began serving as a principal at the high school in Winfield. Evans had a Bachelor of Arts uh, degree from Baker University, and he had uh, a Master of Arts from the University of Chicago. He took an art course from Taft while he was uh, in Chicago at the university. And while visiting Taft's office, Evans noticed an 18-inch copy of a Lincoln statue on which uh, Taft was working. And Evans admired the statue, and he asked to purchase a larger version of the statue for the high school at Winfield. Well, Taft really wasn't interested. He pointed out to Evans that 
uh, his statues were to, to be displayed in outdoors, in, in natural light. And he doubted if his statue could be shown indoors with the same impact. But Evans, I think, on a number of fronts was unrelenting, and he convinced Taft after some time that it could be done. They reached an agreement, and then Evans went back home and sought approval from the Winfield School Board of Education to purchase a statue and rig that lighting so that would satisfy Taft. And then March, just a few months later of the, that same year, the board granted Evans permission to have the class of 1926 purchase a statue sculpted by Taft as a gift for the high school. And then uh, Taft was invited by Evans to come to Winfield. He appeared in Winfield to, to see his work on display. He spoke to several large groups about the importance of public art. And the restored statue today is on display at the Cowley County Historical Museum, and a bronze copy is on display at our high school. But according to Hartley, the boldness of Evans in arranging for artwork is characteristic of his leadership on a number of fronts while serving in Winfield for 27 years. I only made it seven. So. <laughs> A couple of years later, Evans and the school district superintendent at that time, I believe it was W.W. W. McConnell, are credited with expanding the art education program even beyond anything previously experienced with the hiring of a young artist by the name of Sue Jean Hill. Sue Jean was employed by the district as a teacher of art and as an instructor in penmanship for, for all Winfield schools. And she joined the USD 465 faculty in 1929 at the age of 24. She was a native of Wellington. She received her teaching certificate from Bethany College in 1927 and taught art in Marion and Wellington before joining the Winfield School System. And while attending uh, Bethany, and of course most important to Winfield schools, she studied with Professor Sanzane, ascending even then in prominence as a renowned regional and national artist in oils, watercolors, and fine art prints. And in a very short amount of time, Hill made a significant impact on art appreciation among Winfield children and their families. She spearheaded, spearheaded efforts to have an acclaimed painting displayed at the public library each month. And to inspire her students, she entered their, her, their artwork in the Midwest Art I Exhibition in Lindsburg, the art competition promoted by Sanzane, and several of her students won uh, prizes at, at that competition. And calling on her relationship with Sanzane and her familiarity with Kansas artists, in her first weeks on the job, Hill produced a large exhibition sponsored by the Board of Education and, of course, encouraged by Evans, open to the public. The headliner was San Zane, who provided a large collection of oils, watercolors, lithographs, woodcuts, and dry points for the exhibition. Other works in the ex ex exhibition were provided by artists throughout Kansas, all of whom achieved wide notice and large audiences of art patrons. The exhibition had a distinct Winfield flavor as well, and then repu repu uh, with reputations for quality work. Herschel Logan, a graduate of Winfield High School, enjoyed popularity with woodblock prints, had several lithographs in the exhibit. Sue Jean Hill had some of her works exhibited, and Grace Raymond, a popular Winfield artist and faculty member at Southwestern College, displayed a number of watercolors. It's important to note in that 1929 exhibition that was brought to Winfield that individuals uh, participating in that particular exhibition would a year later become part of the 10 founding members of Prairie Printmakers. We've heard about them earlier in earlier presentations today as well. But among others, prints in the 29 exhibition were provided by a, that core group of printmakers, San Zane, Norma Bassett Hall, her husband, Arthur Hall, and Winfield's own Herschel Logan. Pieces from each of those artists remain in our collection today, a collection that has well over 200 works of art in it. Remaining on uh, faculty until 1932, Sue Jean is credited with three separate large exhibitions, exhibitions that drew uh, two to 3,000 people into the community, displaying works of notable artists in schools and in businesses throughout the community. In 1935, after marrying Nicholas Kovacevic and moving to Mexico, she wrote a letter to San Zane stating, some time ago, Superintendent Evans of Winfield wrote telling me that they were still going ahead with the art collection that I started 
are, it made me feel like a missionary who had saved a heathen and started him on the right road. So, <laughs> yeah. Evans is quite sincerely interested in art, she closed. Along with Sue Jean, uh, any mention of Winfield art and artists would be remiss without also acknowledging Grace Raymond. She was raised in Winfield. She was a Winfield High School graduate. She attended Southwestern College and taught there later. She was a prolific painter of watercolors and studied at the Art Institute of Chicago, at the School of Applied Design and the Metropolitan Art School in New York, at the Corcoran School of Art in Washington, at the Heatherly's uh, School of Fine Art in London. She studied with private teachers throughout the U.S., also in Rome, Paris, and Belgium. And many of Raymond's paintings depicted scenes from her frequent foreign travels. And during her life and after she died in 1967, countless Winfield families collected her works and displayed them in their homes. So although few records exist to establish the origin of many items in the collection, a number of pieces likely were gifts from artists or were made available at a discounted price. A few works were inscribed, providing dates and possible reasons for gifts. There were contributions from teachers, members of the community, and school officials. Um, of course, during the 30s, sand zane lithographs could be acquired in a range from $5 to $20. And at the same time, the two sand Zane oil paintings in the collection were acquired. They probably ranged in a cost from $200 to $300. And of course, we know the value of sand Zane lithographs today and, and his oils uh, are much greater. So for the, after the first five years of launching the school art collection, Evans, the, with the cooperation of Hill, Winfield Art Groups, the Board of Education, artists such as Sanzain had accumulated the key pieces as they exist in our collection today. And by all accounts, of course, Evans was passionate about collecting art. And until he resigned in 1952, the school district added to the collection and gifts were received and added to the collection almost every year. You heard, uh, I think this um, shared by Catherine earlier today, um, and it's really these words spoken by the superintendent at the grand opening of the Winfield School Art Gallery in 1936 that we are that we still feel are applicable today and really drives our work um, as as a foundation and as uh, the Art Conservation Committee. In spite of declining budgets and fewer resources available for public education, art education remains an important and culturally relevant staple to the children in Winfield and, of course, beyond. And we know that many schools across the nation are cutting back or eliminating art programs due to budget constraints, even as numerous studies over the past decade have demonstrated the amazing benefit of art uh, and learning. And students who don't have access to art may not only miss out on key creative outlets, but might also face greater difficulty in mastering core subjects, higher dropout rates, and more disciplinary problems. And students, especially from lower income families, often get little exposure to, um, to high quality uh, art. And this, you know, this is an opportunity for us to create a more level playing field for students who come from poverty uh, versus those who come from uh, more privileged situations. And we just simply cannot undervalue this integral piece of education and development for our children. So upon hearing of uh, Mr. Hartley's research and upcoming presentation to the community, and then me uh, going up to the closets where these pieces of art were stored, uh, and seeing firsthand the condition of many of the pieces, I um, thought it wise to advise the Board of Education to establish an art collection advisory committee made up of art teachers and interested citizens. And then over the past 10 years, this volunteer committee has put in countless hours of locating, inventorying works, providing information to community members, fundraising, providing education events focused on individual and groups of artists, displaying those works out uh, in the community and in the schools. 
We've raised over $25,000 to uh, support conservation efforts, about half of what is needed to uh, restore all of the priority pieces in the collection and to um, uh, get access, uh, quality storage, and, and exhibit space. But the, the volunteer group of committee members can boast many successes, and su but it's on the shoulders of experts, really. Art teachers in our community uh, retired now, Lynn Feltz and Martha Fitzwater, experts such as Liz Seaton, who uh, a Winfield High School graduate and, and now the curator of the museum here. She and her, the staff here provided a complete list of resources, recommended several conservators the district might work with to further assess the district's collection. Uh, in the meantime, two endowments were established through the foundation and we've used dollars from, from the uh, endowments to conserve art, but also uh, initially used some dollars available to engage with conservator Peggy Van Witt, an Overland Park conservator, who pro provided us with a current and complete inventory of the collection, condition, past appraisal, treatment required to restore each piece, estimate of the cost of conservation for each piece, and each piece has been prioritized specific to value and necessity, timing of, of the conservation. She also uh, re restored two Sanzane lithographs at no cost to the district, which ha have been really valuable in uh, the efforts to fundraise because we had examples of, of what that was like before and after. And, um, Tressa Grana has provided assistance in helping us define appropriate art collection management policies, including use of the collection, acquisitions, disposal, loaning, documentation, collection care, access and use, risk management, insurance. And Tressa additionally bequeathed over 20 works of art from her mother's collection to be used and displayed for purposes of education. So in 2019, uh, the foundation entered into a custodial agreement with the school district, designating the foundation responsible for long-term care and use of the collection. Important because previously, Board of Education members who come and go uh, think very differently about the value of the art collection and, and its use uh, in, in the district. But we were honored to unveil the first of several school exhibits appropriately displaying the Kovacevich collection at Winfield Middle School, a school that um, up to that time had not had any quality art hanging in the hallways. Um, it gets me a little emotional. Um, and most recently, uh, an expert, another expert in our community, Madeline DeMint, a member of the district's Art Conservation Committee, has assumed the leadership role um, uh, as foundation and school liaison, coordinator of school programs, ensuring that the art will be used for its intended purposes. And our mission is to continually display the art and provide high quality art and artists to students and the community and ensuring the story continues. So in closing, the legacy of Sue Jean Hill will continue. And I've just got to tell you that um, um, the legacy of Sue Jean Hill and now uh, those experts that I've just talked about would see another heathen Winfield School superintendent sometime <laughs> later um, become familiar with art. I uh, honestly, through the years, had one art class, and um, that was with uh, Mary Sue Foster. And uh, that, as I was getting my elementary degree, and, and I was not her best student, I can assure you. So. But I've had the privilege of learning about um, uh, the, the art in our collection and have come to love this project. Uh, and it's fulfilling to know that 100 years later, almost this anniversary, uh, we're going to keep this dream alive. Thank you. <laughs>